Hello, my name is Caroline, but today you're going to know me as Cleo, the muse of history, as together we uncover the truths about myths, legends, and folklore. Who doesn't love mysterious women with mystical powers living in bodies of water? I hope you enjoy the satisfying genre of mythology as much as I do, because we're going to be doing a three-part series covering these watery women of myth. So let's dive into episode one, the Nixie. from English, Germanic, and Slavic myths, the Nixie is a water woman or spirit that lives in rivers and lakes. They're often linked to sirens because they either play an instrument or sing, and of course they're absolutely enchanting. They're shapeshifters who will take form as treasure chests, snakes, fish, mer people, and horses, but usually they take human form. But their human form is usually altered. They have elongated ears, wide fish-like eyes, webbed hands and feet, and their hair takes on a greenish blue hue, and they even have gills. Some Nixies have a more subtle look, but I have to admit, I like the more like gauche, campy look. Now Nixies were both men and women. The men were referred to as Nix and the women Nixie. In Scandinavian folklore, there were multiple names for male Nix, the most notable being Nock. In these legends, the Nock were men who lived in fresh water. They would use their beautiful singing voice to lure innocent women and children to the water's edge and pull them beneath the surface and drown them. It was said their song was most dangerous to pregnant women and unbaptized children, which is an interesting insight. Like many things, even these folklores were influenced by fear of damnation. Due to their shape-shifting abilities and their fondness to appear like a horse, they've also been they've been compared to kelpies at times. However, a kelpie is a jet black horse and a nix will appear as white or dapple gray. The knock was a way people explained accidental drownings at the time. When there was no answer for a horrible tragedy, they made an answer. They believed a spirit would scream and that spot at the river or lake is where the drowning occurred. When in all likelihood, it was most likely the victim's screams. On the flip side, in Germany, on the flip side in Germany, it was believed the Nix and Nixie were both fresh and saltwater creatures. But here they lured men to their deaths. They believed most of them were malicious man eaters, but on occasion they saw a glimpse of a well meaning Nixie. The Germans say the Nixie always bore a mermaid tail, while the Nix appeared as a snake, fish, or human. We said humans could distinguish a Nixie by a slit in their ear or clothes that never dried at the hem. Now, I might absolutely get obliterated by whatever communities out there for folklore and stuff, but I personally believe one of the most famous Nixies was Lorelei. Depending on the person, she's described as a siren, mermaid, nymph, or water spirit. Maybe even all of the above. All things used to describe a Nixie. I could be wrong, but before you jump to the comments, let me state my case. Lorelei was a young woman of undisclosed magical power. She fell in love with a fisherman who returned her affection and a romance blossomed for weeks. Until she got wind of another girl. Lorelai became overwhelmed with jealousy at the thought of losing the man she loved to another woman. She dragged him to the watery depths of her home, wanting to be with him forever. But he was human, and he drowned. And she was left alone to sing her mournful song. I'll continue the story, but I want to note that very important bit. Nixies were compared to Kelpies specifically because of the way they dragged their human prey down into the water and drowned them. Nixies are also known to be volatile. Lorelai felt her emotions strong and fast. She acted on instinct without thinking about the consequences. Left alone, Lorelai sang, and her songs dragged countless men to their watery graves. When Count Ludwig heard her voice, like all the others before, he became, he became entranced. And like all the others before, 
he sealed his doom. The Count's father was angered and distraught when he heard of all the death caused by her. He gathered an army marching on Lorelei. She was unfazed by it all, knowing her own father would protect her. She took a string of pearls that always hung around her neck and cast them into the sea. A chariot appeared and swept her away, never to be seen again. But it said whispers of her song can still be heard if you return to that spot on the Rhine. One of the poems that made her story so famous was written by Heinrich Hein called Die Lorelei, which would translate to the Lorelei. And it goes like this. I do not know what it might bode that I should be so sad. A fairy tale from long ago now will not leave my head. The air is cool and darkening above the quiet Rhine. The mountain tops are sparkling in afternoon sunshine. The loveliest young maiden sits so beautifully up there. Her golden jewelry gleams and glints. She combs her golden hair. She combs it with a golden brush, and while she combs, she sings. The tune is both miraculous and overpowering. She grips the sailor in the ship with a wild and arcing woe. His eyes are only looking up, not at the rocks below. I believe that in the end the waves devoured ship and boy, and that is what the Lorelei accomplished with her voice. Special thank to Cheryl and Marrying and Alonda Perez Ramirez for your request to cover Nixies and Lorelei. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe, and don't forget to let me know in the comments what myth, legend, or folklore you would like me to cover next. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Bye!